Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover the Cocoon Gem. Now for those of you that aren't familiar, Cocoon is a pretty popular solution for creating a setup similar to this one, where you might have a overall project with multiple tasks associated with it, where you want to add or remove those tasks or update them as needed. Uh, and it allows you to very quickly add a uh, situation like this where you have like multiple, uh, you know, child objects uh, parented to one uh, overarching, you know, parent. So we might say like a third task, we might mark the second one as completed, click update, and it allows you to very quickly do that. You have the ability to edit these, you have the ability to, you know, remove these if you want to. It works just like you would expect. Uh, and it's set up very quickly and allows you to do some pretty cool stuff out of the box. Now, unfortunately, the one drawback with this is it does use the evil J word. So we do have some jQuery in here. I'll have a link to the CDN that we're gonna be using for this. Uh, unfortunately, that's just, you know, the way it is. But we can go ahead and get started real quick. Should take pretty much no time at all. We're gonna go ahead and CD out of our demo and do a Rails new video. And for this, I'm gonna be using a dash J of ES build and a dash C of bootstrap just so that things look a little bit fancier. Now, in terms of what we actually have to do here, uh, the setup is, uh, it has like some Rails 6 instructions, but it's gonna be pretty much what we do with every other Rails 7 app. Uh, now, if you are using jQuery and you don't wanna use a CDN for whatever reason, uh, you might have to go through some additional hoops there because the setup has changed quite a bit since even Rails 6. Uh, you know, we don't have like jQuery just built into our applications anymore because that's really cringe to do. Uh, but we'll just take a look at it from a CDN perspective and then you can go find like a jQuery tutorial if you need to. Anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to generate uh, a couple of scaffolds. Actually, let's do the gems first. So let's go ahead and let's open up this in uh, VS Code real quick. Uh, because if we add the gems first, I think it'll do the styling on the forms for us without us having to do that something I forgot to do in the demo and I ended up wasting a little bit of time. Uh, but okay, so in terms of the gems that we need, we of course need the cocoon gem and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste these. We then, uh, in my case, need the foreman gem because I'm using Ruby 3.2. So I need to grab foreman off the GitHub page. And then finally, we need to grab the simple form gem. Uh, alternatively, I think it does support formtastic as a integration option right here, formtastic. So you can pretty much do what we're gonna do here just uh, replace the simple form logic that I'm doing with the formtastic stuff. And it's, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, but anyways, we can do this. We can run a bundle command to install these gems. Once that's done, we can then go over to uh, releases.jquery.com or you can go to Google and just search for jQuery CDN. We're gonna grab the minified version, click the copy button. Then we'll come over here to our app, our views and our application.html.erb file. We'll just paste this in the header somewhere and let the formatter figure out how it wants that to look. That takes care of jQuery. Now, because we have Bootstrap, we can also use some Bootstrap styling, oops, which means we're gonna do a .container.mt-5, which is just going to grab everything and move it over and then down five units so that it's a bit more centered. So if we uh, now come into our terminal, then we're gonna wanna run a yarn add and then at Nathan VDA slash cocoon. And that will add co uh, cocoon to our application. Uh, but we do have to run the simple form stuff. So we're gonna do a rails g simple underscore form colon install space dash dash bootstrap. That'll add simple form with the bootstrap stylings for us, which is pretty cool. And then for the cocoon, it looks like uh, we do have to add the JavaScript stuff. So let's come over to our app, our JavaScript uh, and our application.js folder or uh, application.js file. And we'll just throw in this uh, at Nathan VDA slash cocoon right here, which will give us that functionality because we already have jQuery added as a CDN in our app.html.erb file. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, but if you were including it with a gem or with the yarn, you'd have to also include it here and then go set up like the alias so that the dollar sign works. Well, okay, that takes care of the application stuff. We can now go ahead and generate our scaffolds, I believe. So let's go ahead and let's do a Rails G scaffold. I think I went with what the cocoon page had, which was some projects. I gave each project, I think a name and a description of type text. Uh, and I think that might be it. 
So we'll go ahead and we'll run that. Uh, it, yeah, it looks like that's pretty much all I had. And then we did a Rails G scaffold for the task and each task had a description of type text and a completed of type Boolean. And then we also do a project uh, colon belongs underscore two to set up that association for us. We can then go ahead and do a Rails DB colon migrate, although that part is optional because you can just press the button on the page. And then we can go ahead and run a bin slash dev and hopefully everything doesn't blow up on us. So we can come over here to localhost port 3000 and see that we're riding Ruby on Rails. But of course we want to see our projects page. So we'll come to our routes and in our routes, we'll set the root of the app to be the projects controller and the index actions. We can go to that page that shows us all of our projects just like that. We can see we're already tabbed over and down because of the container styling we put in our app.html.erb file. Now, in terms of the actual Cocoon stuff, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, in, in all honesty, it's basically how you would normally set it up. You're going to has many tasks and you're going to say this is dependent destroy, which is optional, but it's always nice to have. It just means when you destroy your project, you'll also destroy your tasks that are uh, you know children of that project. The one thing we do here is we set this to be an inverse of the project and then we grab the accepts nested attributes for which we've covered before it just means that you can uh you know add the task into your project form submit it with the project and it'll the rails side will handle the creation of this task in the project so it's quite literally saying it accepts nested attributes of the project. So anything nested in the project, which in this case is a task, it accepts its attributes as well and will then create that for you. You then say allow destroy true, which we'll take a look at in a second. And then we reject if uh, all are blank, which is just like, uh, don't make the empty uh, task. You know, when you have that default empty task that's just there, don't, uh, don't create that every time you just have a new one. So we'll, we'll come back to this in a second, but we can now come over to uh, our task just to make sure we have this belongs to, which we should because of how we generated it. We can then go ahead and close that. We need to come over to the projects controller. I just went through this whole shtick and I did it in the tasks and controller. So I might uh, accidentally misspeak here, but uh, we need to add a task attributes here after the description. We can then do a percent I, so we don't need to comma separate this list. And then we're going to add a couple things in here. So what we're adding in here, first of all, is the task ID, the task description, not the project description. Although, as you can see here, they can both be the same. We then need to add the completed Boolean, which is, of course, that check mark we're going to use. And then the underscore destroy is the thing that allows us to destroy the project. Now, they do mention it on the Cocoon page, I believe. Basically, uh, to destroy nested models, Rails uses a virtual attribute called underscore destroy. When underscore destroy is set, the nested model will be deleted. If the record is persisted, Rails performs ID field lookup to destroy the real record. So basically, you have to permit this parameter to allow the destruction to occur, is my understanding. And that's like as of, I guess, uh, Rails 4 or Rails 5. But the one thing I want to point out here <clears throat> this tasks attributes can be kind of tricky. So what I'm going to do here, I already know this is what it needs to look like, but I'm going to take away this S because sometimes depending on your setup and your configuration, you might have to have the singular version or it might only be like singular attribute. I, I can never remember how this works. The easiest way to deal with this is to just see what the error looks like. So you know what to look out for. So you'll always be able to catch this type of error. So I'm going to intentionally set this to be task attributes, even though I know it needs to be tasks, uh, plural, but okay, let's, let's now scroll up here. Uh, and actually I'm going to leave this for now, just so we have something to look at. We can then come into our views, our projects and our project form. And this is where we basically do the rest of what we're trying to do here. So in our project form, we have the name and we have the description. I now want to create another set here. Uh, which I guess we can just do below these two. Oh, let's put it in the form inputs. We're just going to create a H3 for the tasks. And this is kind of important. I believe we need to give this an ID that is similar to the model name. We can see here somewhere in the uh, example list, they do the same thing where they have a div with the ID of tasks for both of these. 
Uh, I'm not sure, but it might be how like the jQuery grabs these elements. So it might be based on ID or by class. So that's just something to be aware of. So we are gonna be copying this layout. So make sure you have these same IDs. You can always play with them afterwards to see if they're actually necessary. Uh, but if they are, uh, then you know, maybe just keep them. In, in this case, we, we have the uh, simple fields for, which is a helper from simple form for. Uh, this is where we use our nested attributes right here uh, to say that these are fields for the form that are for the project. So just like we do like f.input for the name and the description, we could also do a f.fields, which then allows us to do fields for the tasks where we do each one as a task. We then create a partial, which we're going to call task fields, and we pass in the form object, which in this case is the task, which is a child of this this f form, right? So it's it's a little bit of nested logic here, but it allows us to do some fancy stuff. After this, we're just going to very quickly create the links, which we can do down here, still inside of our tasks ID. We're just going to create these links. Uh, and the reason why we do this is it allows us to uh, link to the add association, which lets us add another task if we want to. And again, if we add one and we leave it blank because we have that uh, reject if all blank, we don't have to worry about it, you know, accidentally adding an empty task. But we need to create this partial, the task fields in our projects. So we'll come in here, we'll do underscore task, underscore fields dot html dot erb. And in here, again, we're going to do something pretty similar. We create a class of nested fields. Again, may or may, may not be required. As far as I see, it doesn't really hurt. We then grab the description and the completed. And then we have a link to remove association where we pass in the form object again, which is the task, which is a little bit confusing, but we pass the task in right here as F. So this F is not the same as this F. Uh, although this F does have these tasks under it, but you get the idea. So this is how we create our fields. Then this allows us to add these objects. Let's come over to our projects page, click new project, and I'll say test and case. And we could see right here, I don't have a task displayed by default. So I'd like to at least have one new task down here whenever I create a project so I can either fill it out or just leave it blank and then it won't get created. So let's come into our projects controller. In our new page right here, we just want to say at project.tasks.build. That'll create an empty task for us on this page. And now if we refresh, we have one empty one appearing here. So we'll just say test case, and then we'll say description uh, record the tutorial, and we'll uh, create this project. Now, of course, if we do this, it won't show up here because we're not rendering it yet. But if I hit F11 and scroll up a bit, we'll see some red text. And this is where our unpermitted parameter shows up. And the unpermitted parameter here is the task attributes. So we're quite literally just going to copy this, come down here, come back into our projects controller, scroll down to the bottom and paste this in. So now we can see this is tasks attributes instead of just task, which can be hard to catch. But by doing that, we can now go back to this page. We can say create this project. And now if I scroll down, we should see we insert into projects and we insert into tasks, which means those are now definitely created. We just have to display them. So let's come over to our side panel. In our side panel, we can say uh, this is going to be under our project partial. And then in our project partial, what we want to do is grab this, uh, this right here. Let me just make sure I have this right. Uh, we need to grab this and paste it right here. We're going to create a H3 with the tasks. We're going to have a div with an ID of tasks just so we can wrap all of these. We're going to loop through each of the project tasks, and then we're going to render a partial that we have inside of our tasks folder called project task. Because the actual task partial, if we render that, has the ID, I come in here, it has the project ID, which is nice on the task show page. Uh, but it's not necessary under the project because the project doesn't need to know which project the task belongs to because it's being displayed under the project already. So it's just like a project specific task render. You could either put this in your projects or you could put this in your tasks. I just put it in the tasks in this case. So we'll just say underscore project underscore task dot html dot erb. And then in here we pass in the necessary stuff. So we can just go ahead and paste in effectively what the task has. 
but we just get rid of that project ID. We can go ahead and save that, save our project partial. Now we can come over here. We can see our uh, project info is up here. Our tasks are down here and they're being displayed as expected. Okay, Chrome just crashed. Uh, but if we now come over to the project we were just looking at, which was the record this tutorial, I think, uh, we show this project, we can edit this project. You now click add task to add another one. We can mark the first one as completed, click update. That uh, updates the first one, adds the second one. We can also edit this and let's say remove the second one, click update, and that works exactly how you would expect it to. Okay, so uh, issues with Brave crashing aside, hopefully you can see why this is such a powerful tool. It's also why we've used it for so long in Rails. It is a shame that it requires jQuery. This is one of those times where it's really frustrating that we made those decisions in like the early 2010s uh, to use jQuery for everything uh, because it is kind of a pain to always have to grab that dependency every time you want to use one cool tool. Uh, there's like uh, the, this, this strange dependency on the JavaScript library, but uh, you know, my grievances with jQuery aside, I do really appreciate having this. It's always useful. Uh, and I've used it in quite a few tutorials before. I just don't think I've ever made a dedicated video on it. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, and hopefully I will see you in the next tutorial.